Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today, we're going to be revisiting the 3060 Ti, and instead of undervolting, we're going to be looking at how well it can overclock. Let's find out. So, a few weeks back, I published a video looking at how well the EVGA 3060 Ti Gaming XC how well it performed when it was put into a uh, small enclosure mini ITX system. Now, we were able to uh, get it to perform reasonably with an undervolt, but today I've got it installed in my main system, Big Red, and we're going to see whether we can get a little bit more out of it. We'll be using MSI Afterburner for our overclock, and uh, we'll also be doing some validation runs in uh, Unigen Heaven 4.0, just so we can compare the stock settings compared to the overclock settings, and make sure we do have a stable overclock. So we've got Unigen Heaven 4.0 running in the background now, just on stock settings. We'll uh, let this run for a few minutes just so we can get a, uh, a decent load that's consistent across the tests. And uh, then we'll uh, have a look at how we've done in the benchmark and take it from there. So we've had uh, Unigen Heaven 4.0 running for a while now. And uh, as you can see, we're just about to sit in the high, mid to high 60s in terms of temperatures, which is uh, pretty reasonable. And uh, for our clock speed, we seem to be sitting uh, just under 1900 MHz, occasionally peaking just over. So uh, it's pretty good out of the box so far. And uh, it's not too loud either. It's, uh, you can hear the fans going a little bit. Obviously, it's a, a smaller card, so it's got a dual fan design, which can be a bit louder than, uh, than like a rather beefy cooling solution with a triple fan uh, setup. But uh, it's fairly reasonable so far. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, open up MSI Afterburner and I'm going to dial in some settings and I shall get back to you when I've got what I believe is a uh, stable overclock. So I've been spending a little bit of time just uh, figuring out an overclock for the system and uh, I believe I've uh, reached a stable setting now. So uh, what we've done, we've got our power limit, we just uh, maxed that out to uh, 110% just so we don't get power limited by the, uh, by the board. And uh, I've managed to punch in a plus 175 MHz offset on the core clock. I did try to go for 200 on it, but I did get a blue screen, so uh, I wasn't sure if it was that or perhaps the, uh, the memory uh, could have uh, played into that. But for now, I've just uh, backed it down to 175 and it's uh, been stable enough on that now. For our uh, memory clock, we've uh, managed to go for plus 1000 MHz on the memory clock which is uh, pretty decent and it's uh, showing a stable for now, which is pretty good. I haven't taken a look at uh, adjusting any of the voltages for this, I just wanted to see what we could reach with the current power limits of this graphics card. So, I'm just going to click apply on this and we will do a run in Unigen Heaven and uh, we'll see how we compare to our stock settings. So we've been running in Unigen Heaven 4.0 for a while now and uh, it's looking pretty good so far, we can see that uh, we're occasionally boosting into the uh, high 2000 megahertz range around uh, 2070. It's averaging usually around uh, 2040 megahertz, which is still a pretty good bump up over the uh, previous clock speeds, which are uh, hanging around sort of 1900 uh, megahertz territory. The temperatures don't look too bad either. Obviously, we did increase our power limit, so we are expecting some higher temperatures. But we've only gone up to around 70C, and it occasionally goes up to 71, 72 which is not bad at all. I've also pulled up GPU-Z just for some extra uh, figures for our comparisons, and uh, previously on the stock settings, we were pulling just under 200 watts without an overclock. Now that we are overclocked, we are pulling a little bit more power, 216 watts, but that's still not too bad, and uh, it's expected when we're uh, increasing the limits of our uh, graphics card. So, I've got both our stock and overclock results from our runs in Unigen Heaven 4.0 and we can see that there is a fairly significant bump in performance. At stock settings our FPS score was 136.3 whereas with our overclocked run we managed to hit 147.1 so that's a fairly significant improvement and also you can see that our score went up from 3432 to 3704 now both of these tests were run at uh, 1920 by 1080 but it does give us a fairly indicative look at how well that overclock has worked and basically all I'm going to do now 
is we're going to further validate these results by uh, running some in-game benchmarks and seeing uh, how well it performs and whether there is a significant improvement. Because we may see an improvement in heaven, but it could vary from game to game. So it's worth doing further testing just to see whether we have actually gained any performance or not. So I'll get those benchmarks run now and I will catch up with you once those are done. benchmarks is some pretty interesting results. We've seen certain gains in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, not particularly massive gains, but then when you compare it to Doom Eternal, we have seen a considerable uplift. Now, Far Cry 5 is a bit of the outlier in this test, as there was not really much improvement whatsoever. In fact, for the 1080p test, we actually lost 2 FPS with the OC. So, it just goes to show that the overclock might be ideal for certain situations, but it's going to vary depending on the titles that you are playing. Even though the performance uplift isn't massive, it's still free performance at the end of the day, and we haven't had to uh, sacrifice our temperatures too much. Now, obviously with the benchmarks that we've ran, it may vary when you're actually in-game, because I actually use the Horizon Zero Dawn and Far Cry 5 in-game benchmarking software to get our results. In the actual titles, like Horizon Zero Dawn for example, I was seeing a bit more of an uplift that isn't really reflected in the benchmark. I was looking between 10 to 15 FPS on average. But like I said, these are worst case scenarios with benchmarks, but it still does show the actual improvements that you can incur from an overclock. So would I recommend actually overclocking your 3060 Ti? Well yes, but it depends on what you are trying to gain. Even though it was such a small improvement, what if you were playing a game and you were at 55 FPS and you managed to bump that up to just over 60 to meet that nice sweet spot just by doing a little overclocking? It's up to you to decide. If you can justify the increased power draw to actually manage the overclock and keep it stable, then you may find it useful. Me personally, I like to push the limits of my hardware and find out where the sweet spot is for performance. At the end of the day, it's uh, just a bit of fun and uh, interesting to compare the results. So, that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, then uh, please feel free to like and subscribe for some more content on the way soon. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as to how we did with the overclocking. Have you been able to push it further, or are you having trouble overclocking? Let me know and I'd love to talk to you about it. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.